All right, today we're gonna cover another common issue on your Ford vehicle, mainly the higher end trim levels. It can be an Explorer, Navigator, F-150s, Expedition, it does not matter. If it has power running boards that fold up and out of the way, they're gonna have this issue eventually if you don't maintain them, especially in the salt belt of America, okay? Now what happens here is that these hinges, you see them right here and over here, they have about four pivot points on there, and after a while, they get a little seized up. Now, once that happens, the module and the motor back in here, it notices that, thinks there's a leg caught in there or something because the resistance is too high, and it will retract back down. So you may have a situation where it tries to come up halfway, then gives up, or it may come up and then drop back down. Either way, it'll be something like this. Makes a little bit of noise. You can tell the module has power. Everything's responding to your door input. And the same thing when you close it. So you know your door input is already okay. The module is just stopping in its tracks because it thinks there's something caught up in the system here. Now there's some people that say, oh, it's the motor and gearbox assembly. It just gets beat with salt and all that. No, it's not that I've torn them apart and they're just fine inside. It is the hinges. So they're right out here in the open. We need to do a little bit of maintenance. You can bring them back and then we're gonna protect them for the future so this does not happen again. Let's get to it. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a brush like this. We're gonna get in here, we're gonna clean all those hinge points on there uh, so we can get the bulk of the stuff out of it, like dirt and all that other stuff out of the way. Uh, so when we use our rust penetrant and our lubricant, we can actually get it into those hinge surfaces on there and try to free them up. Same thing up here. Remember, there's four pivot points on here and they can really get packed up in here, okay? I'm gonna get up in here. Over here too, of course, we're gonna spray all over the place. Like on this side, the paint is chipping away. Now the reason why we're going through this whole process to bring these back is because it's nice to have this feature, but these things are uber expensive. It can be upwards of $2,000 per side to buy new ones, okay? So you wanna definitely bring these back and then after this, maintain them, okay? So we're gonna get in here and just do that. I like to use some compressed air. Right in here, because this is where we need to get the lubricant. All right, now once it's as clean as possible, we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna use a quality rust penetrant. I like to use the Mopar rust penetrant. It seems to do a really good job. Uh, but use your favorite brand as long as it's good stuff. And we can get in here and we'll spray, especially up in this area between these two pieces, the metal here, with the center piece and the actual hinge that goes out. We're just gonna soak it over and over again, okay? So it's best to use a straw. So you can kind of force it into there and it's gonna flood out. We're kind of bringing it back. And like I said, this is one of those things that actually does work um, to bring these back. So this will lubricate it, you know, break up the rust in there and it'll even flush out anything in there too. Now, once that gets going like that, I'll start opening and closing this door to try to actuate it, okay? It's gonna move it back and forth a little bit. And if it's, yours is not so bad, and you close it, you can help it up like that. See that? It helped me all the way up. Now it opens. See, it's starting to work already, okay? But you'll notice when you close it, it still can't bring up on its own. See, it's just too much. So you just gotta help it, open the door, close it, and help it. And that'll work that hinge through the full range of motion on there. And while it's up like this, I'll hit it again. And you literally just go through this process over and over again. Now at this point with this actually working a little bit now, you should probably go to the front one and start getting that one free. And then you'll, the process will be even faster, okay? Nope, starting to work. Oh, oh, it's doing it by itself already. Look at that. Kind of gave up three quarters of the way through, it looks like. I don't think that's all the way. You can see it's already coming back. The key is here, help it along until it can start doing it itself. Work it through that full range of motion. I guess it is all the way. Now 
Now it's a good idea to of course have as you know high a voltage as possible. So if the vehicle running, you have the higher voltage, you know, 14 volts or so to help you along or have a battery charger on the battery. But look at that. It's doing it already. So at this point, you don't want to flush out that rust penetrant just yet. Okay. You want to kind of leave it there and let it do its thing. We'll hit it again and then we'll make sure it's working free and then we'll jump to the WD-40. Now once the running board starts working like this, where it goes up, no problem, same speed, nice and fast, and coming down is even faster, almost like dropping out like that, then we know we're ready for the next step. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lubricate those same joints thoroughly with WD. Because that will lubricate it, unlike the rust penetrant, this specializes in lubricating it, protecting the metal components, and then we can also you know flush it out of there. Think about it, this can usually costs around four dollars and fifty cents. Use the whole can on it, it doesn't matter. Just bring this back, okay? And then once it's brought back, you won't have to do this all the time uh, once it's working again. So we're gonna do the same exact procedure, front and rear. We're gonna soak them. Get that straw in there and get it working. And then just keep working the board by opening and closing the door like that. We'll actually use so much uh, penetrant and lubricant like this uh, that I'll keep a drip pan underneath uh, to catch it all because it's gonna be a lot coming out of there. Creates quite a mess. Look at how fast it's going now. Beautiful. Now, once you have the power running boards free and everything works just fine, closing and opening nice and fast, no issues. We can go ahead and we can wipe off the excess WD-40 in here. Anything that's not soaked into the hinge pin area on there, we don't need any of this excess anymore. At this point, we just need to protect this so this does not happen again. And my fluid of choice, of course, is fluid film. This is gonna get in there. It's gonna work into the hinges a little bit, but it's also gonna protect the metal surfaces uh, so water and salt and everything else does not get in there. So it'll lubricate, but it'll also protect the heck out of it and it'll stay on there. That's most important. So we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna get in there just like we're using WD-40. Same idea. You wanna spray all the hinge pin points on there and this will leave on. Get the outsides there, sure, why not? This stuff protects everything. It'll lubricate and protect. And we'll just try to hit it from all sides here uh, so we can get a good soaking in there. The back side there. And the same thing, I'm gonna kind of work it in there So we can get in all those little crevices and do it a couple times. And then after a while, you're gonna go in there and same thing as before, we're gonna, we're gonna get rid of the excess. And anything else that's on there is actually just gonna stay there. It'll kind of harden up on there and it'll stay. It'll get a little thicker, it'll get a little dust on it uh, and it'll make it stay on the surface there. So we're gonna get it off all the extra areas here. We're gonna leave it on the hinge pin locations and that's it. Now at this point, the system is lubricated. It's working, you're using every day. This is protecting it from future corrosion. Ideally, this is the last time you need to touch it. But in reality, fluid film being down here in the muck, uh, it's gonna get washed off. So I would say, you know, every fall, definitely before the salt season, uh, you want to get in here and do the same thing with the fluid film. At this point, you should only need the fluid film to keep it going uh, now that it's operational once again and being protected. That's all for now. Hope this helped you guys fix your Ford yourself. See you next time, guys.